COVID-19 has thrown us into a present where lectures are not given by someone standing in front of a chalkboard, but digitally. Aside from those with prior experience in giving online lectures, most of us are now adapting and trying to learn how to give a lecture remotely. Looking back in history, we can trace back the evolution of the lecture format though and see that it has undergone changes already. The core of the experience is someone talking and explaining things to, uh, to an audience. Now, the ancient Greeks, though, would then draw in the sand, let's say, to explain uh, geometric concepts. Later on, we would use a chalkboard or a projector. And with the computer, people are using LaTeX, Beamer, or PowerPoint to create lecture slides. In all these cases, you have different supplementary material, but the core of the experience is still someone giving a real-time uh, real lecture in a, in a setting usually of the duration of an hour. With the internet, we see uh, this emergence of short video chunks on individual topics, let's say like Khan Academy. Similarly, on many MOOCs and online courses, there's a tendency to provide taped video lectures uh, that are more narrow in scope and shorter, and then, then people would watch asynchronously. Now, COVID-19 has forced many of us faculty to use video conferencing software um, to provide, uh, to give lectures and then talk over, over slides in, in a, in a real-time setting. We argue that the present crisis presents an opportunity for us to rethink and experiment with the lecture format and do more things interactively. Now, over the last two years, we have been adding functionality for interactive lectures to our inter integrated statistics learning environment, IELTS, and those were originally meant for in-class instruction, but we have now been busy adding functionality specifically geared toward remote lectures. Let me give you an overview. So as the instructor, you can load PDF slides created in LaTeX or PowerPoint, and then can, you can make annotations with a drawing tablet or your Apple Pen, like you would do with a projector. The annotations are transmitted to all students, and they are also available later in case the students couldn't make it to the lecture. Students can also make their own annotations. How? The underlying peer-to-peer -peer architecture allows for direct real-time communication channels between students and instructors alike. Students can also ask questions during the lecture by posting them on a question queue, and we have real-time polls, surveys, um, group work for students to collaboratively solve questions, etc. Now let me share some anecdotal experiences and lessons uh, that might also be informative, hopefully, if you are using other tools or doing in-person lectures again. But because of using R, we can track uh, and study what is actually happening. So one issue in the remote setting is clearly that students don't want to speak up, be it over Zoom or an aisle. So like they also don't really use the global chat, for example. So what we've now done is we have the ability for students to ask questions anonymously in our chat. Uh, similarly, if students ask a question in the queue, uh, the others don't see um, who asked a certain question. So that also, like if someone is shy and afraid of, of embarrassing themselves, they can still ask a question. Um, we have also found that many features um, are more utilized if the TAs or instructors demonstrate them at the beginning. So we will also always want to motivate uh, and explain the different activities and, and um, technology and also model the behavior that we want the students to exhibit. Similarly, uh, we have these feedback buttons on each slide where students can say whether they understand something or confused. And those get much better usage if we prompt the students to actually answer them or if we have just individual questions. Um, otherwise, they get heavily underutilized. And although we provide facilities to track we use it during the lecture, it can be difficult for instructors to keep up with that because they have to focus on different things at once then. So it's often helpful to revisit the lectures afterwards and study the student responses, for example. And we have many means such as the response visualizer, where you see here a word cloud of the different answer choices. We can also incorporate statistical activities that one can do during lectures, like many of those presented here at ECOTS. Hopefully we can start a conversation and share some resources with each other on how to give better lectures, not only in this period of remote instruction, but also for the time afterwards, to give our students more rewarding experiences and to really let their lecture format shine.